Beginning with the perception that populations of native salmon were diminishing at an alarming rate, denizens of the lower Matol River, the part of that river basin that interacts directly with the Pacific Ocean in Northern California, have taken concrete steps to regenerate salmon spawning grounds by helping to restore a river severely damaged by sedimentation. Why is sedimentation a culprit? Because when silt washes into the Matol River, it displaces the clean gravel in the riverbed, altering the amount of oxygen in the water and the river's temperature. The result? Salmon eggs suffocate before they can hatch. Where does the sedimentation come from? For the most part, from the clear cutting of forests and the roads built to move out the fallen timber. Trees and understory vegetation hold soil in place, especially on steep slopes, so in their absence, when the long and strong winter rains come, extensive soil erosion results with silt finding its way into the river. The longer-term result of the silt buildup? Extensive gravel bars that, after growing and joining with each other, makes up what is locally called a riparian desert. Using the word desert is not hyperbole because the absence of soil and the hot, dry conditions that sedimentation brings with it make restoration efforts more complicated and formidable. The restoration of the river environment so salmon can flourish entails getting inside and intimate with ecological processes which are complex and circular, subtle and often counterintuitive to industrial eyes. Examples of this include restoring riparian edge habitat, increasing bank stability, and providing in-stream salmon habitat. Sounds easy? Here are several activities demonstrating the level of effort and commitment by the Matoll Restoration Council and Matoll Salmon Group. Augment nature's resiliency by creating stable riparian areas adjacent to the Matoll, helping the river to cleanse itself. Plant 16,000 willow cuttings, 10 to 20 feet in length, in 16,000 feet of dug trenches to provide structure and moisture fortifying the riparian edges. Plant 22,500 riparian plants on 100 acres of sedimented floodplain and tend for five years to help create riparian edges. build on the regenerative characteristics of natural systems to gradually heal themselves by assisting salmon spawning habitat to come more alive. Cable in large woody debris to help create the cool and shaded water places favored by salmon. Freeman House suggests three principles which we might keep in mind as the mandate for local ecological restoration grows. Principle one, approach the planet as the planet reveals itself. Ecological restoration must be approached contextually, bioregionally, within the boundaries of natural systems like ecosystems and watersheds. Principle two, Human populations of natural areas are necessary participants in local ecological recovery. Ecological restoration deals with real plants and animals in real time, in real places. These behaviors are the very expression of recovery, and information about them generally resides nowhere else but in the experience of locals. Principle 3. Natural regions exist in time. If the restoration program has been structured so that decision-making and work has been largely performed by local people, especially young people, 
then a population will remain whose identity has been extended to include their habitat. They will have the will to defend the place against further violations, and they will begin to invent the styles of resource development appropriate to the long-range survival of their places and thus of themselves. They will have become participants in the planet's recovery. <laughs>